Hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. You might have noticed my absence last week and and that is because, oh gosh, these last few weeks have been a doozy. I, I found myself in like this really weird headspace where like I felt guilty making time for myself because my to-do list was so expansive even though like I know in the back of my head if I would have just set aside a half hour or an hour of time to myself to to film some videos I probably would have been a little bit more productive in the last week however uh, last Friday I, I did give myself a slow start to the day I sipped some beautiful silver needle sent to me from Masters Teas if you've been subscribed to this channel for a minute you might have heard me say that white tea and I just don't get along it tastes like a whole lot of nothing to me however I have to say that the silver needle from Master's Teas was beautiful. Steeping it felt almost effortless. It was a cup of the sweet, delicate grape flavors as well as some light cucumber flavors. It was the kind of white tea that made me feel a little more optimistic about white tea in general. And after that tea session, I found myself in this kinder and more intentional headspace. This video is not about that white tea. This video is more like a continuation of the exercise and positivity. So I'm actually bringing you today my five May favorites. I've, I've done a video like this a couple of times in the past. It's just a time for me to sit down with a cup of tea and reflect on some of the really great things that happened during the month. Because sometimes it's really easy to just go on autopilot and kind of get in that weird, funky state of mind where you just kind of feel negative and you kind of have to intentionally reflect on some of those positive things to, to really remind you of, of everything that really was wonderful during the month. But before we get into that, if you're not already subscribed here, go ahead and smash that red subscription button below so that you know when I upload. We like to talk about tea here. So today we are sipping hongcha or a Chinese red tea and this comes to me from Estes. And disclaimer, this tea was gifted for review purposes. Chinese red tea is actually what we in the West call black tea, a description based on the color of the leaves. Whereas in China, red tea is based on the color of the liquor. And this hongcha from Estes offers cherry, honey, and caramel aromas. Now, if you've seen Lauren's reviews over at Steeping Time uh, of, of the Hong Cha, as well as the three oolongs that Estee sells, you might already be familiar with Estes. However, if you're not, I'm gonna go ahead and link to her in the description box below and definitely go check out her site. I, I've already had the Honey Orchid Oolong from Estes and this was one I've mentioned a couple of times where I had intended to um, upload a video for the review, but I was playing around with the format a little bit and execution just wasn't right. Um, so I never got around to, to, to uploading that or finishing editing it, to be honest, um, which is a shame because I think I've, I've had a handful of, of honey orchid oolongs this spring and, and of the three or four that I've tried so far, the honey orchid oolong from Estes was probably my favorite. Her honey orchid oolong really delivers on those honey notes. It was like if you had just taken fresh honeycomb and just shoved it into your mouth. It was just so decadent and beautiful. Oh, I need to get more of that. Like, like that is the honey orchid oolong from Estes is, is worth buying like a bigger tin of to have that. I, I'm, I'm thinking I need to do that. Aside from that, Estee, who is the owner of Estee's, Estee's, Tees, Estee's, see what she did there? Anyways, aside from, from delivering a beautiful product, Estee is connected with the farm and the farmers, which I think is really cool. I do all of my tea shopping online, and sometimes it feels like there can be a little bit of disconnect between myself and the artisanship of the tea that I'm purchasing. So um, I love it when tea sellers share on their website where the tea comes from and about the farmers and, and you get that with Estes. And fun fact, even though Estes is based here in the States, she is still connected with 
the tea farmers over in China. She stays in contact with them through uh, an application called WeChat, which from what I understand is sort of like Facebook. So that's really, that is really cool too. I just realized I haven't actually tried this yet. I'm, it smells really nice. I think the thing that I notice first is actually the mouthfeel of this tea. Like it's it's very luscious and almost buttery and thick. Flavor-wise, I'm getting like this really delicate uh, honey malt flavor with just like a hint, with just a hint of some caramel notes on the end. There's a hint of fruitiness there too, like just a hint. And I feel like if I had steeped this um, in my kaiwan, I would have been able to draw those out a little bit more. But the sample that I received was just 2.5 grams, which is about half uh, half the amount of tea that I would put in my gaiwan. My gaiwan's about 120 milliliters, I think. This would be a tea that I'd be really happy to tuck into in the mornings. Like this would be the perfect kind of tea to start my day with. It's just a nice cup of tea. Now let's get into my five May favorites. Favorite number one are jumbo coloring books and jumbo crayons. These have given me so many productive mornings. Oliver is obsessed with coloring and putting stickers on coloring pages right now. Every wall on the first floor of our house is, is proof that he loves coloring. <laughs> However, since we got him these jumbo coloring books, he's been able to channel his creativity into onto paper instead of my walls. So that's good. May favorite number two is the tea company, The Space Between Black and White. I'll link to their website in the description box below as well. Um, but they, they had reached out to me on Instagram after I had commented on, on another Instagrammer's post uh, featuring a tea called Ho Kui. I think Ho Kui leaves are probably my favorite tea leaf to look at. Like I'm always pleased to see them when they come across when they come across my my um, Instagram feed. But I've never tried it, and I had mentioned that in the comments. And um, so the space between black and white reached out to me basically said, hey, we saw that you've never tried this tea before. We'd like to send you a package for free because we just need to spread the tea love this year. So they, not only did they send me um, some of their Ho Kui, look at these. I just, I'm, I wanna do more on these in the future, but these are the ones that are like, like the super long uh, green tea leaves that have been pressed. But so not only did they send me a package of their Ho Kui, they sent me a couple of other samples as well. So I also have a Dian Hong black tea, another Tia Guan Yin, can always, always, I always welcome a Tia Guan Yin into my collection if you've seen my, my last Tea Together Tuesday video. Um, I also have some Yellow Mountain Green Tea as well as some Hermit's Roast, which is a Taiwanese charcoal baked oolong, I think. I think this Ho Kui though is gonna be my weekend session in a couple of days, so I'm really excited. So thank you, The Space Between Black and White, for your very generous uh, gift of teas. Favorite number three is the tea community as a whole, but, but then again, like when is the tea community not one of my favorite things? Seriously, it is amazing. My internet footprint goes back to 1999. I'm not even exaggerating. And I have been a part of many online communities over the past two decades. And my favorite that instantly felt like home is the tea community over on Instagram and over here on YouTube as well. I love this community so much because I just see so many people building each other up, giving each other words of encouragement, sharing experiences, sharing tea, and and like genuinely caring about one another in the community. Like I had both Jan over at Tea with Jan and Brianna over at Brianna Drinks Tea uh, reached out to me and sent me a direct message over on Instagram after like a week and a half of radio silence just to make sure that I was okay. And that to me is like, I mean, gosh, the world needs more Briannas and more Jans. Like, you gals are amazing. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I am okay. Favorite number four is one of my favorite bands like of all time and that band is Tiger Army. I listened to them a lot back in high school. Probably during my 20s, I kind of didn't really listen to them that much. Um, their sound had shifted into something that was different from what I was used to. And also during that time, I was just sort of influenced by like the people that I hung out with 
who they listen to. However, I've kind of gotten back into a lot of the tunes that I just genuinely like, so I've just been listening to, well, a lot of like punk and post-punk lately. But out of all the bands that I've been listening to lately, like Tiger Army has been on like heavy rotation. And disclaimer, I don't expect any of you guys to like Tiger Army like at all. Um, they are, they're like in a really specific niche genre and um, it's not one that is, is widely appreciated or revered within I think the, the alternative music umbrella. Back in the day they were like Psycho Billy, which is this misfits influenced horror punk that is blended with 1950s rockabilly. They've kind of they've kind of shifted and evolved and it's been really interesting to listen to to that evolution. Uh, I mean, they're definitely still they definitely still have their punk roots about them, although maybe it's a little bit more poppy like the Ramones. And they've kind of shifted away from like the 1950s into the 1960s. Some of their songs sound a little bit influenced by like the Bakersfield sound country, some of the outlaw country that was popular during the 1960s, but also like there's definitely elements of like 1960s pop and 1960s surf rock. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, I'm like, I'm just so obsessed. Like when I say that I've had them on heavy rotation, like there was one day where I think I listened to their entire discography from like 1995 to, well, 2019. That brings us to our final May favorite. So May favorite number five, our Zoom chats with my family. I was supposed to pack Oliver up and drive him down to Ohio so that we could visit, uh, so that we could visit my family. But literally two days before that, Michigan was placed on shelter in place orders. So we've been here ever since. But I have been able to connect with them on a weekly, bi-weekly basis through Zoom chats. And it's been really great to see their faces and chat with them and, and connect with somebody other than my husband and my 19 month year old son. So that's something that I look forward to every week. So honorable mentions because I couldn't just keep it to five. Honorable mentions include ASMR videos to help me get to sleep at night, but also like the comment section of ASMR videos. Like it is almost as wholesome and nice as the tea community. It's really weird. I mean, you don't expect there to be nice people on YouTube, except for the tea community. All you guys are amazing. And, and ASMR is kind of like really weird, so you definitely wouldn't expect to see nice people there, but oh my god, like they're so nice. Also, FedEx, UPS, USPS drivers, like, like I'm so grateful for them for bringing me tea packages and for bringing the coloring books and the crayons. I, I tried buying them at Walmart, but they were out and they just were not restocking them, so I had to buy them online. But because of the work of the USPS, UPS, FedEx. I stayed sane and Oliver stayed entertained. Also, good weather and sunshine days. Like, finally, springtime is here. I mean, it might have come a little bit too hard because yesterday was 90 degrees and I can't do 90 degree weather. No, not at all. But up until yesterday, we had amazing weather. Like, just beautiful, beautiful weather. Like, we've been outside at the park like every, every single day. So, I mean, obviously, Oliver's been excited about that because he gets to run around like a little maniac. Also, my new glass teacup and my new glass teapot that you saw in my last video as well as this one actually now that I think about it. I am really excited because I felt really weird making tea videos where you guys couldn't see the tea. Ooh, and pre-orders for Tea Thoughts Summer Countdown to Summer Box. I definitely have one of those coming to me. Um, and my new t-shirt. Um, I had been eyeballing these uh, t-shirts from the Tea Thoughts shop since I purchased the spring box a couple weeks ago and and you know what? Just decided to buy one. Love it. It's so beautiful. Oliver really likes it too. And there we have it. Five May favorites plus a bunch of honorable mentions uh, among the chaos that was May. There were a lot of really wonderful things that happened and sometimes I just need to take a minute, sit down and reflect on them to remind myself that that May was pretty awesome. But now it's your turn. I would love to hear from you. What are some of your favorites from the month of May? It could be a new tea that you discovered. It could be a song that you have on heavy rotation. It could be a new or old hobby that you've invested time in. Just 
let me know what you loved during the month of May, what brought a smile to your face and helped keep you grounded. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.